In this video, we will demonstrate how to thaw frozen primary cells. As thawing protocols for specific cell types may vary, always refer to the recommended protocol received with your cells. Unlike fresh cells, which must be used immediately upon receipt, a stable supply of frozen human primary cells can be used in a number of experiments over a significant time period. Whether isolated from human blood or bone marrow, Proper thawing and handling of these frozen cells is critical for optimal viability and recovery. Begin by warming your wash medium of choice in a 37 degrees Celsius water bath. We recommend using IMDM, DMEM with glucose, or RPMI plus 10% FBS. PBS with 2% FBS may also be used if preparing the cells for immunomagnetic cell isolation. When removing your frozen cells from storage, minimize exposure to room temperature. If you are not proceeding directly to thawing, place the cells on dry ice or in a liquid nitrogen container. We recommend thawing only one frozen cell vial at a time to prevent prolonged exposure to DMSO at higher temperatures. Wipe the outside of the vial with 70% ethanol or isopropanol. In a biosafety hood, Twist the cap a quarter turn to relieve internal pressure, and then retighten. Quickly thaw the cells in a 37 degrees Celsius water bath by gently swirling the vial. Remove the vial when it is almost completely thawed. There should be a small amount of ice remaining. This should take approximately one to two minutes. Do not vortex the cells. It is important to work quickly in the following steps to ensure high cell viability and recovery. Wipe the outside of the vial again with 70% ethanol or isopropanol. Measure the total volume of the cell suspension using a two milliliter serological pipette. This value is used later to calculate the number of cells provided. Place the cells back into the vial to mix the suspension. Remove a 20 microliter aliquot of cells. Dilute the aliquot with medium or tripe and blue and set aside for cell counting with a hemocytometer. For greater than or equal to 1 million cells, we suggest adding a minimum of 20 microliter of medium and recording the volume of medium added. For less than 1 million cells, dilute directly in 20 microliter tripe and blue. Set the diluted aliquot aside. It is important to take an aliquot for counting before washing the cells. This will confirm the number of cells provided and track potential cell loss in the wash process. Transfer the remaining cell suspension to a 50 milliliter conical tube. Rinse the vial with one milliliter of warm medium. Add it dropwise to the cells while gently swirling the tube. Gently add another 15 to 20 milliliter of medium dropwise. Centrifuge the cell suspension at 300 times G for 10 minutes at room temperature. While the cells are in the centrifuge, perform a cell and viability count on the diluted aliquot. For more detailed instruction on how to perform total nucleated cell and viable cell counts, please refer to our technical video, How to Perform Cell Counts with a Hemocytometer. After centrifugation, carefully remove the supernatant with a pipette. Leave a small amount of medium to ensure the cell pellet is not disturbed. Resuspend the cell pellet by gently flicking the tube. If cells are starting to clump, Add DNA's one solution to a final concentrate of 100 micrograms per milliliter of cell suspension and incubate for 15 minutes at room temperature. 
do not add DNA's one solution if the cells will be used for DNA or RNA extraction. Wash the cells once more by gently adding 15 to 20 milliliter of medium to the tube and centrifuging the cell suspension at 300 times G for 10 minutes at room temperature. Note that cell loss of up to 30% can be expected after the wash steps. Cells are now ready for use in downstream applications, such as cell culture with methocult or immunocult, and cell isolation with EasySEP. For more information, please visit www.stemcell.com forward slash primary cells.